Oh man, you hate to see it. It always makes me a little bit sad to see the Glowies do this to somebody's landing page. So today we're gonna take a look at two piracy sites that have been taken down by authorities, both by our local American Glowies, the Justice Department, and the other service was shut down by Europol and Spain's National Police Force. So let's start with Z Library or Zlib org, which is this domain here that was seized. So this was an ebook website that, according to their Onion site, which seems to still be alive, had almost 12 million books and 85 million articles. So they claim to be the world's largest ebook library, and you know what? I believe them. This is almost a hundred million text items, or I guess maybe text and picture items, if we combine the books and the articles, which is over half as many items that are in the Library of Congress, and I believe the items in the Library of Congress also include things like VHS tapes and stuff like that. Now, part of the reason that I think Z Library is particularly based is because, number one, the service is still up, okay? At least the website is still up on tour. The Onion site is up on tour. Now, I don't think that the service is really working, or at least it wasn't working for me because when I loaded up this site from International Waters, of course, I was able to create an account, but it kept telling me that I had reached the daily limit for downloads and that it's telling me my IP is 127.001, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, uh, and that I needed to confirm my email address, but they never actually sent me an email to confirm my account. Uh, and then, yeah, there, there's all of this stuff. And even here, I think I should be able to download five downloads, but you know, it's telling me that I'm accessing them from 127.001 and I've spammed them too much. So I don't know, maybe this is part of the Glowy's efforts to take down the ClearNet site. Perhaps the service really is down right now and the bills for the server that's uh, hosting this Onion site are just paid up. And of course, an Onion domain is something that the feds can't really take unless they were to get the private key that is used to create this domain because fun fact, that's how uh, Tor sites, Onion sites work. It's public private key pairs. But maybe it does work if you had an account before because I just today created an account on here uh, to try to test it out. But the second reason that I think this service, Z Library, uh, was slash is very based is the community that it served and the reason that a lot of people were actually accessing this site in the first place. Z Library was an absolutely essential service for students. And if you don't believe me, you're probably going to see some people in the comments of this video testifying on their experience with using Z Library for getting textbooks, and I think you could also get scientific papers and stuff like that for college. Now, now I don't know if all countries are like this because I know that some of them use tax money to basically pay for university costs for their students, but I don't know if university costs just means tuition or what, but here in good old Burgerland in the US of A, students pay for their textbooks, which really sucks because they're usually already broke and they're probably gonna be in debt from taking out loans to pay for tuition in school because it can be tens of thousands of dollars. So it really just adds insult to injury that on top of going tens of thousands of dollars into debt for tuition and housing and stuff like that, you now have to buy a $65 textbook. And another thing that a lot of universities do, or I guess it's not necessarily the university, but it's the class, because I, I think it's the professor who d kind of decides what books you have to get. I don't know. I just finished high school and then didn't do any school beyond that. Uh, but anyway, one thing that happens within the university system to really screw students over is their professors or whoever will tell them that they have to get the most up-to-date version of a textbook the version that's oftentimes published that year. I just use this one as an example because you can see this was published August 23rd, 
2022. And very likely there were probably students going in because let's see, yeah, I think this was before the beginning of the last semester. Uh, there were probably a lot of students that were just going into school for this last semester, taking machine learning or taking some kind of computer science and they had to buy this book, okay? For no reason. You could have just as easily used last year's book or a book from two years before then, even in a field like machine learning, which obviously has a lot of changes. It's not like the field completely changes from year to year, right? Every type of science and, and field of knowledge is generally built upon. You usually don't see people throwing away everything we know. It's like, okay, we have to completely start from scratch. But no, they don't let students do that. They don't let them borrow some upperclassmen's book or buy a used upperclassmen's book uh, for pennies on the dollar because they want you to pay 65 bucks for that hardcover book. Now, one thing that I do think is worth pointing out about Z Library and the other piracy service that we'll look at in a moment is that they weren't strictly free. So these were not like the Pirate Bay or any of the other free torrent sites that you might be familiar with. The people running Z Library did make a profit, as we can see on uh, this page here with kind of the nonsense error message. Uh, when you're a guest, you only get five daily downloads and you only get up to one megabyte per second download speeds which on the clear net, this is obviously really, really slow. On Tor, you know, that's probably not gonna matter too much. Um, but with these uh, upgraded plans, like with um, Basic, well, this is also free. This is just for, I think, confirming um, your email account or whatever. But you get 10 daily downloads, and then with Premium, it shoots all the way up to 999 daily downloads, and there's unrestricted bandwidth speeds, and you get all these extra benefits if you pay them money. So they were reselling copywritten materials and they, they call it a donation. Uh, I guess maybe this was done for, um, <laughs> maybe for some legal purposes, but it really doesn't matter. So they did definitely make a profit off of this. And we can see that um, that's part of the reason why they got in at least as much trouble as they did because uh, they were arrested in Argentina by the Justice Department. We could see that they have been charged with criminal copyright infringement, so that would have just been the distribution of copyright and materials, but wire fraud and money laundering. So that's where uh, kind of selling the copyrighted material comes in. And another part of the reason that these guys got caught in addition to selling the copyright material is that it was getting a lot of attention and promotion on TikTok, of course. Every great tragedy in the world has to have TikTok involved in some way. But it's true, US authorities in particular, they pay very close attention to trends on TikTok. There's federal agents whose full-time job is probably unironically to watch girls dance on here. But if we look at the Z library topic or hashtag whatever the hell this is on TikTok, it has 1.5 billion views. That's a lot, okay? That's a lot of people that are searching for this. Um, and we can see that it's not like they're unrelated. You know, everyone here is like talking about books. It's not like there's some other service out there that's called Z Library that's getting mixed up with this. No, like people were actually using this service. And you can also see that most of the people that are talking about this are women, which I guess makes sense because if I'm not mistaken, women tend to read more often than men do. So I guess it makes sense that women would also be pirating books more. And we can see things like hashtag university. So yeah, uh, this was something that a lot of people were doing, just getting their textbooks from here. I know I've seen a lot of people, well, not a whole lot of this, but there's some, you know, anyone can become an author and write a book. So there's some people who have written a book that like 14 people in the whole world have read. And they're like, oh, I'm glad that it got shut down. I don't want people pirating my heckin' vampire romance novels, basically Twilight, if you bought Twilight from Wish. It's like nobody's pirating your book, dude. No one cares about your book. The, the main books, if I had to guess, that are getting pirated from these sites, it's the same thing with music. It's the really mainstream stuff that's already making millions and millions of dollars. And then of course, uh, in the unique case, since it's books, textbooks so that people can pass school. Now, the other service that got shut down by the Spanish police and Europol was an illegal IPTV service that operated under many different names, such as 
TV Choice Spain, Great TV Choice, and Best TV Choice. So this is just another clone of services like Netflix and Hulu, except the people operating this service did not buy any of the rights to any of the shows or broadcast that they would air to people. And I think they were also duplicating sports streams and stuff like that. Tons of people do that on, on Twitch. I'm sure you guys all have your own uh, services to use for pirating streams. Uh, and at this service's peak, the Choice TV whatever, uh, they had 2,600 live channels, which, like I said, were probably just duplicated streams from various TV networks. They had 23,000 non-live movies and TV shows, and they were generating profits of more than 3 million euros. So far, four people have been arrested, 95 resellers of the service have been placed on alert, 32 servers dedicated to the operation have been seized. Now, obviously this Spanish, or I guess it was really just a European streaming service, was a much bigger operation than Z Library, but it probably had fewer customers. 500,000 subscribers. Sounds kind of low to Z Library, especially since it's got 1.5 billion hits on TikTok. And they probably also had fewer customers because, you know, it costs money for the service. As far as I could tell, there was no free option for great TV choice. Uh, but of course, with Z Library, there are some free options for you to get up to 10 daily downloads of books, uh, which is probably pretty good. So I definitely think that Z Library was a whole lot more wholesome. I was bummed out when I heard that it got shut down. I never used them personally, but a lot of my friends who went to college did. But you know, the best way to keep this freedom of information going, free access to books, movies, regardless of their copyright status, is decentralization. Right now, the people who are using these services, they have to find replacement services, which might not be that big of a deal for Z Library, because you know, with text and um, maybe some pictures and audios and, and books and stuff like that, you could probably create an archive of all of these 100 million or so items and maybe a few terabytes. And then you could create a torrent to distribute that. And that is something that is much harder to shut down than these centralized servers where law enforcement can figure out where your server is. Pretty hard to hide that unless you're using something like Tor. And even with Tor, I mean, <laughs> Someone, most likely the feds, have been DDoSing Tor ongoing now for the good part of this year. So torrents, decentralization, you know, it's a lot like blockchain technology, except it's been around a lot longer. Maybe look into that.